action right now. NFL free agency tracker, the professor John Clayton joins us. What do you think of all that has gone down with John Dorsey in Cleveland to this point, John? Uh, I think Cleveland looks brilliant. I think right now they've moved themselves in a position to be the number one team in the AFC North because when you think about, you know, here's the uh, Baltimore Ravens. They lose four players on defense and free agency. Uh, they are making adjustments on the offensive line. They're going to a running second year quarterback. And so they're not going to be maybe, I mean, they've, they've they're not going to be formidable. They'll be okay. And then you've got the Steelers without uh, Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. But now you look at what the, the Browns did, and this trade is just incredible. Think about the reality, because being able to get Beckham back or in, in this trade, and uh, they get Odell Beckham Jr., a pass rusher and Olivier Vernon, and, of course, uh, you know, they, they, they only have to give up a guard in Kevin Zeitler, who's a good guard, but you give up a guard, a first-round pick, and a third-round pick, that's a steal. And then you think about it from the Giants' perspective, they didn't put the franchise tag on Landon Collins, and so basically they're losing three Pro Bowl players, and they're getting three pieces of, in return, you know, the 17th pick in the draft, the 95th pick, and uh, Kevin Zeitler. I don't think that's equal. Do you understand Gettleman's path, by the way, with the Giants? Uh, yeah, it's kind of like the same path that he had at Carolina, uh, where you know, it's like he, he takes it to the point where – he doesn't like to have all these many high-priced players. Like, if you remember, they, had, they were negotiating after putting the franchise tag on Josh Norman. And Josh Norman was saying, hey, I want $15 million. I'm a $15 million cornerback. And so he goes, oh, we can't pay that. We'll give you 12 And the next thing you know, they go into May, and they let him go. And he signs for $15 million to go with the Washington Redskins. And so uh, you know, he, he's an uh, a old-school guy. He's a guy that, uh, you know, he knows his football stuff, no question about it, and he's got a good scouting eye. He's, he's a guy that likes to run the football, have a big offensive line, and then uh, try to make do with uh, some lesser-paid players on defense. But uh, that got him in trouble. It cost him a job in Carolina. And you've got to think right now, that's got to have him in a real tough spot with the Giants because, I mean, the Giants, you know, they, they were a bad team last year, and I think as somebody phrased them, they look like an expansion team with 37, an expansion team with a 38-year-old quarterback and Eli Manning. John Clayton, the professor, he's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Pipeline as we go around the NFL in the, again, early stages of NFL free agency. So what's going to work out better, Diva wide receiver-wise, with Beckham in Cleveland or Brown with the Raiders? I think uh, Beckham in Cleveland, you know, because the Raiders aren't going to be that good next year, and so that means that you've got the, and particularly if they trade Derek Carr, now you may have a rookie quarterback like Tyler Murray throwing to Antonio Brown, and he'll get below 100 catches. You know, that could be very scary. But look at the positive things going on. You've got Blake, uh, you've got a, a Baker Mayfield, who's going to be working pretty well with him. You've got a, the combination of uh, Jarvis Landry, who went to LSU, you have uh, Odell Beckham Jr., who went to LSU. And guess where the wide receiver coach came from? LSU. Yeah, so they thought that's familiar. Like, yeah. yeah, so it's got, he's got family there, and so that, I think, makes it a little bit easier. You know, Mayfield's going to be a fun quarterback for him to deal with, so I see nothing but positive things. What, uh, besides what, what Cleveland has done, who else sticks out as far as in free agency to this point making themselves better, John? Well, I mean, I, I like what Buffalo's doing because they're really attacking it, but they're not overpaying. Okay, so you know they get two wide receivers, a fast one in uh, John Brown. You know, then they're able to get a, a good uh, slot guy in Cole Beasley. They got four additions on the offensive line, and so that's that's the thing that baffles me on some of these things in free agency. <clears throat> Sometimes you need to do volume, and it's not like they did great things, but again, they go out and they get four guys on the offensive line where Houston, who has the worst offensive line, Buffalo is pretty much second. You know, Houston hasn't done anything on the offensive line. So I give them credit, and then they're getting defensive pieces. They got Kevin Johnson out of Houston, so I like them. I think they overpriced themselves with the New York Jets. You know, certainly, I don't think I've ever seen an inside linebacker being paid like an edge pass rusher when they go to $17.5 million for C.J. Mosley. That, I thought, was a little bit expensive. I thought that they got a pretty good deal on Le'Veon Bell because they waited him out and beat him down and got him in you know, the, second, the third lowest, uh, third, third highest paid running back. They didn't even get him to $15 million. They did a good job there. I think they got a decent wide receiver in Jamison Crowder, so I think they've done a good job. 
So John Clayton with us. Devin Funches is going to join the show for the first time tomorrow. What do you think the Colts got in the former Carolina wide receiver? Well, they they got a uh, you know he doesn't have great separation, but he got kind of get a go up and get him type of guy and a big target on the uh, on the one side. And so that's I think the, the the unique part. Now the one thing I think we all see in what uh, Chris Ballard does, he's not going to pay the best, the highest price. He's going to be you know, particularly he doesn't like free agency as much as other general managers, and that's smart because what happens. You know, because he's trying to build something in Indianapolis. And I just went through the 2016 free agent class, and just roughly off the top of my head, now remember, that's, this is the third year into that free agency class, uh, 32 of the 49 top paid players are gone. So mm. think about that. Yeah. How do you build in free agency? And, you know, Chris Ballard's not trying to build for two years. He's trying to build for four to five years. And so if you overpay, uh, you end up paying a price for that because then you get dead money against the cap. It prevents you from trying to keep your own players. And so uh, in Funches, you know, the one thing that was unique for him in this free agent class, because it's not a great receiver free agent class, is the fact that he's a tall outside guy. And that helps because most of the other guys like Golden Tate and that, they're more slot guys. And, you know, They've got inside stuff with uh, T.Y. Hilton. So, no, I think it's a good fit. And, again, I think they got him at a decent price. Maybe $10 million was a little bit high, but still that's a, I guess maybe a million dollars higher than I thought. But, again, I think that's a good signing. I, so the Chiefs just released Eric Berry. They have a complete defensive makeover. Was Bob Sutton's scheme and everything so bad, players so bad? No, they're going 3-4 to 4-3 with Steve Spagnuolo right now. But does the overall complete makeover of this defense kind of surprise you at all? Yeah, I mean, because what I don't understand, because, you know, it cost them a chance to go to the Super Bowl last year because their defense was so bad. But the one thing that they had was a pass rush because they were up there among the leaders in sacks, and that's because they had three pass rushers. Chris Jones, who's still there on the defensive line, a defensive tackle, and then they had Justin Houston, and then they had D. Ford. Well, they cut Houston. You know, they uh, traded Ford. For, believe it or not, a second-round pick next year, not even this year, <laughs> and you're going, where is that coming from? So it's like that surprised me. So overall, I'm just kind of stunned at what they're doing because you know they, they let uh, their best cornerback, Steve Nelson, go. Now Eric Berry's being replaced by Tyron Matthews, which I think was a good signing, a little expensive, but a good signing. But no, it's like you know defense was their problem, and now it's a bigger problem. I think Eric Berry could fit here in Indy? Mm, if he's healthy, yeah. Because he's a great player. He's a great player and a great person, and he's a great leader. And particularly with all the youth that's there uh, on defense, I think that could be a good fit. It just depends on the price. And, again, his health, because he hasn't been healthy for the last two to three years. But, no, I think he could be a good fit. All right, John, we, we talked about those that are doing something right now that are active. Anybody surprise you with their level of inactivity to this point? Mm, I mean, you know, Houston. I mean, Houston's made two moves. But basically, just kind of replacement type of things. They lose Matthews and they lose Kareem Jackson, and uh, you know they haven't done anything on the offensive line. So I think I'm a little surprised Houston hasn't been as active as possible. Most of the other teams, I think, you're kind of going the way they are. If you're Dallas, and again, you're waiting for this first wave to get done. Seattle's waiting for the first wave to get done. So I think you know most of the teams that understand that you know if you get heavy in the free agency, you're going to make more mistakes and uh, have to correct them in two years than you have success. But, no, I think that overall it's, it's kind of going to form. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell, does he return to form after missing a year, or is it going to be struggle from here on out? I wonder. I mean, I think it depends on where his mindset is. And you can see, number one, he screwed himself up as far as trying to do the negotiations because he lost $14.5 million thinking that he'll come out of this healthy, he'll be able to get into free agency. Then he found out that, very, hardly anybody wanted him. They didn't trust him. They thought that he missed a year, and so they it was window shopping more than anything else, and the Jets were the main team. You know, you know, Baltimore was window shopping. San Francisco was window shopping. Oakland was window shopping. But he thought he was going to have a strong market, and he didn't. And that's why he ended up having to take you know, 13-4 as opposed to 15 or 16. So he, he thought he was going to come out as the highest-paid running back, and he was the highest-paid running back last year you know, with the 14-5-5, but he, he fumbled by not taking it. Yeah, <laughs> man. John Clayton, the professor, getting us updated on everything around NFL free agency with still more to come, and he's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. You are always awesome. Thanks for being on point once again. I'm sure we'll check in midway through and toward the end to see what's going on. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, John Clayton on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Quick break. We'll